Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. The opening match on this show is one of the worst matches I ever saw in my life. And it was the opener, by the way. The only redeeming quality on this show is Gorilla and Bobby. Like, they're the only good thing on this show. The rest of it is absolute, utter trash. And the entire, like, the only thing this goddamn show is good for is promoting WrestleMania 3. And getting over Hogan, and getting over Andre the Giant, and getting over this main event. Nothing else matters. It's not about having great wrestling matches. It's not about having any of that shit that we watch today and think that that's what a good wrestling show is all about. A wrestling show is, like, the whole point of it is to promote your shit, which practically nobody even does anymore, and make stars, which at least WWE is doing right now. AW to a lesser degree. But, like, that's all this show is good for. That's all it's good for. And... Fuck. Like, I couldn't believe how awful this show was leading to WrestleMania 3. Like, watching this show to think that in, in like, three weeks, 78,000 people are watching this. And, you know, closed circuit and pay-per-view and they're going to make a shit ton of money. Because of this fucking show. Goddamn. Yeah, I made a comment online about how I don't want to hear anyone ever complain about wrestling in 2024 ever again. No. You should be forced to watch, not Gorilla and Bobby, just the matches from Primetime Wrestling for a month. You will never bitch about anything on Raw or Impact or Dynamite ever Absolute again. waste of time. Let's begin. <laughs> they did, and I was surprised at this, actually. They did follow up on Gorilla Monsoon's visit to Andre the Giant's training camp. He admitted he was very impressed. He even said Bobby gave him fine accommodations. And kind of solemnly, he was not happy to say this. But he did say, I have to declare, Andre the Giant is the most dangerous individual at this point in time in professional sports. Yes. Very heavy. Yeah, Bobby and Gorilla were fantastic on this show. Absolutely great. Bobby is the best troll. He has the best shit-eating grin. And Gorilla Monsoon, he has a, he has a real gravity about him. Like, he's, he's a complete gimmick, and he's always wrong. But, you know, he uh, he has a serious tone about him. And the thing I liked about this show about Bobby and Gorilla, too, is they just fucking, you know, just they just go. Cameras start rolling and they just go. Nothing is scripted. They both have That's to fair. remain in character yep. and just kind of go back and forth with some banter, knowing in the back of their minds, okay, what are we doing? I'm the baby face. I got to kind of stick up for Hogan. Bobby knows he's a heel. He's got to push Andre. They both know they've got to say whatever they can do to get the match over and sell tickets for the match and get people interested. And it's all improv. And every now and then they'll they'll crack each other up. Uh, Bobby uh, Gorilla had a line late in the show where, who was he talking about? Uh, some some hot 80s star, forget her name. Samantha Fox. They put Samantha, Samantha Fox. Fox. Samantha Fox. I set up. What? And he goes, uh, he goes, Bobby. You know, she, uh, she really likes your lips. Bobby goes, what? He goes, she told me, look at that kisser. And Bobby has gotten to. And someone in the in the actually on the set in the background, you hear start laughing, and Gorilla starts to crack, and he takes it to break. I was dying. <laughs> That's the best shit on the show when they crack each other up. There was an even better example of that somewhere in here. Yes. Let's get to it. But, uh... But anyway, this opener, Sika, Sika, the father of Roman Reigns and fucking Moondog Spot in the shittiest fucking match of the 1980s. This went like 15 minutes and it was literally nothing but Sika putting him in a front face lock. For minutes on end. And Moondog would get out and he would get put back in the front face lock again. Once he got out and he was put in a chin lock, at which point he escaped back into a front face lock. I could fast forward at any time. I did not allow myself to. I suffered through this entire fucking match just so i could see how horrible this fucking business could be they even had a spot 
Like, this crowd's just, you know, they're like, uh, they're just kind of watching it. They boo every now and then. They chant, Sika sucks or whatever. Keeps putting him in this fucking headlock. This crowd's just, like, bored. It keeps putting him back in the fucking thing. And then, you know, Moondog, whatever, he makes a come, he gets put in the chin lock on the mat. And this is like 10 minutes into the fucking match. We've been seeing this nonstop for 10 minutes. And finally, I don't know if he does like an elbow to escape or whatever. And all of a sudden, Sika grabs him and he puts him in the fucking front face like again. And the people screamed. They went, ah! No! He got put back in the fucking... I was dying. I was dying. Uh. This was the worst match I've seen in a fucking decade. Am I wrong? It was fucking horrible. Oh, my God. It was absolutely God. atrocious. It was rotten. Oh it was the drizzling shits. I'm trying to think of all the other cliches you hear about terrible matches. It was an abortion. It was just, just wretched. I literally wrote, I was concerned we were about to watch a two-hour front face lock. Yeah. I feel like we did. So, first... Yes, Brandon. This was significantly worse than NXT. Significantly. This is uh, miles thousands. and miles and miles beyond that Wendy Chu match we buried. That was uh, eight stars over this. You know what's ironic is they could have made this match worse with a graphic. They could have thrown chin lock on the screen, <laughs> front face lock. They could have identified the fucking holes that I was watching for ten fucking minutes. God. So yes, worse than Miz and Priest and the zombies. Yeah. Worse than Seth and uh, Fiend and Hell in a Cell. Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Worse. I mean, horrible. Yeah, absolutely Atrocious. Was. Absolutely was. There were boring chants two minutes in. And then, keep in mind this is 1987. The crowd begins to chant, Sika sucks. If, this is not common language. I'd heard it in 87. It was in top secret. But if I had said something that sucked in 87 as a 12-year-old, I probably would have caught a butt weapon for my mom. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Plus, so, there wasn't a lot of wrestling to be exposed to so it's like they would have to have seen enough wrestling to know that this sucks <laughs> i think anyone <laughs> if you've never seen a wrestling match before and you watch this you say this sucks like steamboat and now, the savage was before was this Sika match versus moondog spot the worst match ever Let's see what chat gpt has got to say doesn't even know how to spell Sika. oh wow <laughs> just, say, just say yes. The match between King Kong Bundy and Moondog Spot at Wrestling Classic pay per view at 85 is often cited as one of the worst matches in professional wrestling history. All right, then. Although not universally regarded as the worst ever. There's no fucking way it was worse than this match. No way. <laughs> we saw Bundy on the show. It was better than this. Yes. So even before the match starts, he was promising. We're going to see a lot of takedowns here, a lot of go-behinds, a lot of switches, just openly burying them. The match begins. Nothing happens. It's boring as shit. Bobby and Gorilla have to talk about something. So they begin to list all the holds we are not seeing in this match. There are no flying leg scissors. There's no hammer locks. There's no spinning toe holds. Spots come back, included a pin attempt off a snap mare. See, come up with a Samoan drop. Hey, at least he killed him with that move. He just squished him. He fucking crushed him. God. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.